Hi, I'm Zeb with Darling Dork, and I'm reviewing Red November. Red November is a cooperative game from between two to six players. It's a... It's basically a game in which everything goes wrong that you can pretty much imagine. You're on a gnomish submarine, and it's just having probably the worst day that it's ever had. Um, there's a Kraken that's trying to attack you, the nuclear reactor is preparing to melt down, the missiles might launch any minute, fires are breaking out, the ship is flooding, all the doors keep locking. Your goal is to survive for 60 minutes. That's not 60 minutes in real life, but 60 minutes on the board is indicated here. I'll explain how that mechanism works in a bit. The game comes with a few different components. So. Starting here, there's the item components. So there are tokens that you can pick up around the board or through some event cards. They do a variety of different things. So for example, Grog. Grog is one of the most important components in the game. Your gnomes can get drunk and it just gives them a flat bonus to do stuff or do crazy stuff like rush into a room that's on fire and try to put it out. The downside being that it might not work and you'll die. However, as you continue to drink, you're going to eventually pass out. Other things give bonuses, so Fire Extinguisher, self-explanatory, gives a bonus to putting out fires. The various manuals give bonuses to the challenges that come up, so it might help you stop the reactor from melting down. That's basically how that works. The board itself, the submarine is divided into ten different areas. So there's the engine room, the air pressure room, the reactor room, the missile room. Uh, there's a hatch to actually go outside that lets you go out and fight the Kraken, which usually ends really poorly in my experience. You have a, the 60-minute track that proceeds around the board like so. Notice these little stars here. They indicate when event cards are drawn. I'll get to those in a minute. You have these tracks right here. If any one of these get to the top, everybody dies. It ends very badly. There are lots of ways to die in this game, actually. You have these little timed event trackers right here. Basically, certain cards will say, like, missiles ready to fire or uh, the Kraken is about to attack, and you have a set amount of time to rectify the situation before everything goes kaput for everybody. They get marked on the board like so. That tells you how much time all the players have to get and fix that before everybody's doomed. You have the event cards. So event cards, they do lots of different things, like, here's one, descent. Advance the pressure track by one. That's bad, because the ship is now being crushed. Or, fire spreads. If there's a fire in one room, it immediately spreads to an adjacent room. Fire spreading is bad for a couple different reasons, apart from the obviousness of fire on a submarine being an undesirable outcome. It also starts to drive to asphyxiate the crew as the oxygen level reduces, which means that fire rap rapidly spreading out of control can be a quick way to die. Um, some of the other ones hatch blocked, so any one of the hatches gets locked and then you have to been, be able to open it either with a crowbar or with something else. So you have fire tokens and water. Water has two sides. There's high water and there's low water. Low water means that players can still move through a room. It's only partly flooded. If it's at high water, it's completely flooded. You have to be able to open a door to release the water out. You have the 10-sided die. And ten-sided die is important just for doing actions in the game. You do actions, there are a variety of them. There's pump water, fight fires, open doors. And you do those actions by committing a certain number of... You set a, basically a mark you want to go to. You'll say, I want to commit seven minutes to it. And you have to roll seven or under. Um, items will give you bonuses to that. If you fail, there's not necessarily a consequence, aside from the fact that you waste the time. However, in moving down the track, say I'm the purple guy, and I commit seven, but I don't quite make it. I move seven minutes down to the 53, and I get every event that goes off there. So if you're not succeeding in your actions, you're getting lots of events going off, and most of those events are really bad for you. So the pressure is on if you're committing a lot of time to something. Um, finally, there are the little character cards. They're just significant for one reason. They indicate how drunk your character is. Because the drunker you get, the more difficult it is to do stuff, and eventually you might pass out. If you pass out, um, you lose a turn, which can be bad if a room floods or catches on fire. That's the basic gist of the game. So players will go around trying to put out fires uh, and just make it through to the end of the game. It's really hard. I would say I've played this game at least 15 to 18 times, and I've won maybe three of those. I've died at times in the first 15 or 20 minutes of it. 
sometimes just everything goes belly up on you. It's an appropriately difficult cooperative game, and that's exactly why I like it so much. Um, little pet peeves, I think that death should be optional. That's also, I, I mean, I think that characters should be able to die, but I'm a big fan of um, just new characters coming right in. Partly because I don't like player elimination games. I think it's really boring to die in a game, just have to sit out for a half an hour. That's a personal pet peeve of mine. I also, there's an optional rule to have your gnomes attack each other with crowbars because there's a betrayal mechanism. One gnome can at any time decide that, screw this, things have really gotten, gone to hell, I'm piecing out. If they can find the aqualung, they can get up through the top hatch and swim away, abandoning their comrades to what I can only assume is an extraordinarily grisly fate. That can be frustrating because if that person already has the aqualung and they piece out, then there's not much you can do to stop them. But with the fighting gnomes me mechanism, you can beat him to death, which just adds another hilarious element of chaos and carnage into this game. I like it a lot. I bought it for about $25. It worked out pretty well for me. I've gotten a lot of plays out of it. It's always entertaining, even though it usually goes badly for you. More often than not, you're going to be losing. A few Apollo 1 jokes have been made in the course of playing this game, which is kind of tasteless, but I think it's appropriate given the number of fires that break out. If I'd have to rate it, I'd say it's about an 8. If you like cooperative games, I think this is the game for you. Enjoy.